Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Draft to Glory Goon Squad 3. Today, we are going to deal with the aftermath of this club blowing it in the playoffs again because they just can't not do that. Damn it. But hey, it is what it is. I didn't even take a look at the full stats at the end of the last episode. I was practically in mourning. Uh, Ty Bowden's five points in seven games isn't bad. He's one of the few to not score. Hedberg with five points. Keaton Wilson with five points. Richard Gudis, only two. Holt with six. Sigalette with six. Rintoul, all three of those goals were in the first two games. Summers, Heinrich. We started off so strong. We really did. We really did start off strong. That second pairing fell apart. Steve Robertson is maybe the most disappointing player I've ever had in a franchise month. He's up there. And unfortunately, by the end of it, especially with that Game 7, Spencer Beyer, uh, his numbers plummeted. But he is our guy. And we will move on to yet another draft where we will hope to strike gold. At least we will hope. I said, but yeah, that, uh, oof, oof, that playoff loss. The Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup. It's a bit of a smile on my face. The Lehigh Valley Phantoms take home the Calder Cup in 2035 as the Bruins defeated the Red Wings in the conference final and then beat the Anaheim Ducks in seven, while Lehigh Valley defeated the Ontario Reign five games in the final. So the Eastern Conference now, a third straight Stanley Cup. Bruins had also won the President's Trophy. Michael Misa is the Art Ross winner, as well as the Hart Trophy winner. Guy named O.D. Marchessault won the Norris. Dreisaitl wins the Bing for Vancouver. Oh, Marks was the Conn Smythe winner. Any other familiar names? Jennings goes to Hodgson and Bayer. Didn't mean a damn thing for us. Not a damn thing. Unfortunately, great season for Michael Misa, apparently. In the AHL, Adrian Kempe put up the most points. Jack Drury was the MVP. Uh, Pensick scored the most goals. Of course, it wasn't a great season for the Butte Bruisers either. Uh, yeah, that will uh, that'll do it. 20-34-35 in the books. And to the offseason we go. To the draft we go. Obviously, we don't have a lottery pick. Montreal holds the number one selection in the draft, and we will see who is available for us here. In terms of retirements, the previously mentioned Leon Dreisaitl is gone, as are numerous, numerous big names, quite a few to put up over 1,000 points in their careers. Offensively, Noah Hannafin, Timothy Liljegren, and the GOAT, Connor Timmons, and Nick Hague. Leah Samsonov, Tristan Jari. Yeah, again, the league continuing, really continuing the shift. We are that far into this that, you know, a lot of younger guys that are just breaking through IRL now are retiring. All right. Let's see if we can turn around the mood here. Have a good draft. And, of course, as a power forward going first overall. Let's see if we can turn things around. Pick number 28 of the first round. Indeed, the Habs get that player, Andrews. Who might have just been the type of player that we need, but we're not going to get him. So let's take a look, squeaky chair and all, at who is available for us here in this draft. Because odds are, we're going to be good again next year, right? Like, I won't be surprised if we make the playoffs based off of how the past couple of seasons have gone. It just seems that... We have the tendency to do that. We are more than likely, of course, as another good goalie, uh, we are more than likely to make the playoffs, it would appear. That said, I would like us to get out of the first round. Um, we're feeling pretty, pretty leafy as of late. Sorry, Toronto fans, but what other comparison do you want me to throw out there? And we need to find a way to break through, and I don't know if we ever will. Again, we talked about that a couple of seasons ago, the idea of are we too good to fail and, you know, too bad to be good, essentially. But taking a look here, we do have some good options. You know, it's not looking like this is going to be the worst draft for us. And, of course, there are some good goaltenders. This is a draft where we likely, 
look at taking at least one goalie, if not two. Low top six grinder, damn. Uh, for the sake of the AHL, as we continue to kind of graduate certain players up. And with that, we are up to the top 100. Let's go take a timeout and see what we have here. But yeah, just to look at the roster again one more time. Goalie-wise, yeah, we need we need another one. Especially, you know, if Hodgson weren't to stick around and his deal is up, Ashton might end up being our backup next year. Obviously, defensively, Morrow, he's, he's our guy. He is our most valuable asset. And we still lack, I don't know how Summers still has that trade value, but we continue to lack that elite level forward. So let's see. First and foremost, goalies, and there are a lot of them, and obviously the highest rated is Carson Bachman. Holpe comparison, confirmed abilities, the likes of Sponge. I mean, yeah, he is he's the guy to take. Then there's uh, Carl Polak, who, my God, his save percentage sucked, but damn. All right. I guess it'd be Polak, as in Roman Polak. I always heard people pronounce it Roman Polak, though, too. But then again, that's close to a word people are uncomfortable with, and rightfully so. Um, with that, I think obviously we'll avoid Duclair. We just don't know enough about him. Menard might not be bad. Uh, not looking good for Colts off. And then Shane Inglis. Who knows? One of those three goalies towards the bottom will have to take him. Honestly, Bachman might be the guy. Defensively, Mikanoff certainly stands out. There are a lot of defensemen. Good God. Uh, we don't know a damn thing about Ariel Irons. I don't even know. I think he was on the list from last year. Uh, Artem Latipov, four years out. Eh. Aiden Savage, four years out. He has a Jalmerson comparison, though. I'll put him over Latipov. There's Bryce Hackett. Three years out at 18. Unconfirmed quick pick. Dominic Thornton, three years out at 18. There's Elliott, three years out at 19. We'll eliminate him from contention. Kip Fedoruk, four years out at 18. Khalil Lane, unconfirmed, three years out at 18. Uh, Mikhail Rodin, two years out at 19. Okay. I mean, it comes out to the same average, though. Patrick Walls, three years out. Reed Franco, a little bit more. Mikanoff, three years out at 18, but unconfirmed low elite. All right, there's a lot of defensemen kind of in the mix. A lot of them. None of them that I'm immediately thinking, let's take this guy right now. Uh, right wing, there's literally one dude. It's Harold Trainer, who looks pretty decent. Three years out, has truculence and unstoppable force. Harold's the guy right now, for sure. Uh, Clarence. I think it's Chiolifito. Chiolifito. It depends on how Italian you want to be about it. You know? We're going to go with Chiolifito. Oh, Chiolifito. You know? Um, yeah, he's four years out at 18. There's Hickman, four years out at 18. And then there's Grinder Haynes, four years out at 18. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. And in the centers, there's one. Oh my god, there's only that many forwards out of all the people that we pinned early on, huh? Three years out, Eli Donahue. Very obvious choice here. While that goalie, uh, you know, Bachman is a slam dunk. That's not what we need. Uh, we are going to take the Austrian, Harold Trainer. All about that base. Okay, no, he's not all about that base. Uh, 65 overall, though, 18 years old. With truculence, relentless, and unstoppable force. Honestly, he feels nearly identical to some of the other forwards we've already kind of drafted. Doesn't he? Doesn't he? It's nice, don't get me wrong. He'll end up at least at a Rintoul level. And with Wilson and Summers. Boy, Summers was such a huge disappointment. Good God. Hopefully he ends up being better than Jaden Summers. He's not bad. For an end of first round pick. He's not bad. I'm happy with it. You know, we kind of have to deal with the hand that uh, was dealt to us. Inglis, 47 overall, medium elite. Yikes. Duclair, 47 overall, medium elite in goal. Jekyll. 
Uh, Bachman, 59 overall, has gold sponge and such, goes to the St. Louis Blues. But yeah, 59 overall goalie at 18 years old, that is not what we needed. So there were a lot of medium elite goalies. So we made the right choice there, in my opinion. Now that brings us to who is left. And in goal, we have one goalie left. And it's this guy who I'm probably taking. Uh, Mikanoff certainly might not be bad, but you know, DFD six foot four. There's not going to be much of an offensive threat there. I think we we take the goalie. And forward wise, it's Haynes, Donahue, and Silfato, and one of these guys should not all three should be left. So yeah, no doubt in my mind. Let's take the goalie. We need one. Uh, Carol Pollock is going to be our player from the Extra Liga. Whew, 70 medium starter. Oh, baby, he had abilities as well. That's a bonus. I just thought, you know, hey, good overall, good potential. He's got some silvers dialed in, tip jar, post to post, and contortionist. That is a slam dunk pick in the second round. Absolutely beautiful. No doubt we made the right choice on that one. Very, very happy with that. I mean, depending on, and yeah, as it was, Mikanoff was a low four. We definitely made the right choice. In terms of who's left, look at that. Donahue, uh, Lane and Rodin, and Donahue was the one that I was really kind of looking at. So Eli Donahue is probably the pick, unless, as we sort by potential, we can guarantee other slam dunk options. There is Raphael Schroeder, Schrader, whatever is uh, preferred. Who could be the guy? A lot of two-way forwards. Good lord. Uh, Rudy Streit. Nick Pitton. A lot of pittens. And ooh, it uh, yeah, it starts to drop off from there, doesn't it? Oh boy, does it drop off from there. Alright, well, I think we know what direction we're going. And that is with Donahue. Although, again, I'm already here, so let's go ahead and pin some other players. I mean, Vandermeer, there's no way in hell I'm going to take him. should probably just take someone else. Yeah, pinning all these low nines. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I just I can't help it. Compulsion at this point. And we get to the defense, in which there's just a whole lot of mid, <laughs> as is typically the case, with our defensive options. I mean, at least that guy's name is Jaden Cummins. Uh, let's go ahead. Next pick. Pretty damn obvious. It is Eli Donahue. Damn it. Low six. Was hoping for low elite. That's not bad for a third rounder, but mm, could have been a little bit better. Still one of our better drafts, though, through the first three picks. Goalie-wise, there's one dude to take. Jackson Wood. Who is just a complete wild card as to whether or not he's good. So probably not worth it. We already got our goalie. Defensively, there is Nick Ackeson, five years out. There's Felipe Pelletier, potentially four years out. And then Tara Santala, five years out at 17 with a confirmed mid-potential. And then our forwards... I mean, Schrader's probably the guy to risk it on. Let's just do it now. Raphael Schrader from the Kingston Frontenac is a low nine. Okay, well, no pressure on our first round pick trainer to actually be good, huh? Not at all. Not at all. In terms of forwards, I mean, I think it is going to be that low top six grinder who's our best bet right now. Strite, Pitten, defensively. I mean, you could take somebody like Murley and just hope that he's actually better than advertised. Same with Ned Palmieri, although he's an overager. We are still going to take a forward here. I think we'll probably aim for Ackeson in our next round. So, who's it going to be? Pretty straight. Five years out at 19, or Nick Pitton, five years out at 20. It's going to be neither of you, because you are both absolute trash. There is Todd DeMello. Big boy. 
Big rig. Let's go for him. Screw it. Potential grinder, Todd DeMello. Uh, medium bottom six, power forward. Sure. Honestly, it's probably better than ending up with one of the low six and being disappointed. Uh, with that, let's take Nick Ackeson from the Seattle Thunderbirds, who is a medium seventh. First three picks of this draft weren't that bad. From there, the wheels fell off. Oh, my God. We could take Taro Santala, and I probably will. Just out of pure desperation, there's Paul Mary, the Overager, the Grinder, Terry Ortiz. Yeah, I think... I think we have our guy. If we don't take Santala, we got to end up just taking someone who's 17 years old anyway and hoping that they're good. You know, someone that hasn't really been scouted yet. So Taro's our guy. And he is a 51 low four. Almost Mr. Irrelevant. That is it for this draft. Again, first three picks, first two picks especially, but first three picks, not bad. And from there, the depth just was not available to us whatsoever, which really, really sucks. Let's take a look here. So Hodgson will be qualified. Oh, no. 